The space phase of hauling massive payloads into orbit to repair shuttles may be a thing of the past. That's because Silicon Valley's Singularity University is getting ready to launch the first 3D printer into space. Earlier I spoke to Mike Chen, co-founder of Made in Space, on this tech breakthrough to the final frontier. We are putting the first 3D printer in space on the space station next year. And the idea behind it is that we are opening up space access to everybody. Because we're going to have a 3D printer there, you're literally going to be able to just send us files, we'll be able to hit print, and whatever you had on your computer screen will be in space minutes, hours later. Give me um, a couple of examples of what types of things are being made. Everyone kind of knows the Apollo 13 scenario. Houston, we have a problem. You have this $100 billion spacecraft up in space and astronauts' lives depending on it, and what happens if something breaks? What do you do? Uh, previously, you had to kind of jerry-rig something together from what you had lying around. Now, people on the ground are going to be able to design a repair and just upload it and hit print. Are you actually printing now in space? Not yet in space. We have been, over the, la uh, the last few years, testing our technology on parabolic aircraft. So uh, those are the aircraft that simulate zero gravity. And we've done over 500 parabolas now on those aircraft to, to really prove that our technology works in zero gravity. But the first print, the first object that actually will ever be manufactured by anybody off of the Earth uh, will be when our first printer gets to space. So that's next year, towards the end of 2014. In space, everything floats around, right? So right. how do you make that work? Up until this point, everything that has ever been in space even though there's no gravity in space, it has to be designed and built to be able to withstand gravity. By making things in space, we are actually just completely circumventing that problem. And so when you talk about things floating around, that's what we're most excited about. We're most excited about, for the first time, being able to have things in space that can only exist in space. Where would we be in the next decade if this is po possible? There's, of course, the science fiction vision of humans colonizing the stars. Why in the 70s were we projecting these fantasies of living these amazing lives in space and it's not happening? And really one of the biggest reasons is the price. It's literally too expensive. And what we see ourselves doing is cutting that price by orders of magnitude, by making it so that you don't have to launch things anymore. And if everything goes as planned, you and I may actually be on the moon having this follow-up conversation in 10 years. Well, we'll check in again in 10 years. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Mike.